You might think you know Jack Kirby, but here are 13 facts you may not have known about the King of Comics. Jack Kirby was born on August 28, 1917 in Manhattan's Lower East Side as Jacob Kurtzberg. The son of Austrian Jewish immigrants, he would create comics under a number of different pen names, including Jack Curtis, Kurt Davis, Ted Gray, and Lance Kirby, before settling on Jack Kirby, which he liked because it reminded him of actor James Cagney. One of Kirby's earliest and longest collaborators was Joe Simon, with whom he co-created Captain America, The Manhunter, The Boy Commandos, and The Newsboy Legion, as well as revamping the Golden Age version of The Sandman, among others. In 1947, the two created the genre of romance comics with the first issue of Young Romance. Real Nazis didn't care for what happened in the pages of Captain America. One time, Kirby received a phone call at his studio saying that there were three Nazis in the lobby ready to show him what they would do to Captain America. Kirby rolled up his sleeves and headed downstairs to sock some Nazis, Cap style. But by the time he got there, they had left, narrowly avoiding the beating of their lives. Kirby was drafted into the Army in 1943, ending up in Normandy just a short time after D-Day. When his lieutenant learned Kirby was an artist, he gave him the dangerous task of scouting towns and drawing reconnaissance maps and reference drawings, which, for the record, is insanely dangerous. By the 1950s, Kirby found himself at Marvel Comics, and in 1961, he and Stan Lee created the Fantastic Four, starting a revolution in comics. Over the next decade, Kirby would create or co-create dozens of the most popular characters in comics, including Iron Man, Thor, the X-Men, the Hulk, Ant-Man, the Silver Surfer, and Doctor Doom. Jack Kirby and Stan Lee also introduced the first black superhero, the Black Panther, who first appeared in Fantastic Four number 52 in 1966. When Kirby moved back to DC Comics in 1970, he would introduce many of DC's earliest black heroes, with Flipper Dipper, Viking, and the Black Racer all debuting within a few months of each other. In the late 70s, Kirby left comics to work in animation for Hanna-Barbera. While there, he did designs for shows such as Thundar the Barbarian and Turbo Teen, a show about a teen who turns into a sports car whenever he gets too hot. We're gonna chalk that one up to being from the 80s. Remember that movie Argo? The kind of true story of how the CIA rescued a bunch of hostages from Iran by pretending to make a movie? Part of the real-life ruse was a series of architectural drawings by Kirby, which he had done for a theme park based on the sci-fi novel Lord of Light. In 1982, Kirby drew a 3D comic called Battle for the Three-Dimensional World, which included a pair of 3D glasses that said, Jack Kirby, King of Comics on them. Somehow, longtime Tonight Show host Johnny Carson got a hold of these glasses and got mad, thinking Kirby, whom he had never heard of, was claiming to be the best stand-up comic. Once the misunderstanding was cleared up, Carson apologized. According to writer Mark Evaner, Kirby's biographer and former assistant, Kirby wasn't able to drive a car because his mind was always working, creating new characters and stories. He would get so wrapped up in his thoughts that he'd drive his car straight off the road. Even more so than Joe Simon or Stan Lee, perhaps Kirby's most important partner was his wife Roz, with whom he had four children, and whose marriage lasted from 1942 until Jack's death in 1994. He based the personality of his character Big Barda and her loving marriage to Mr. Miracle on his wife and his relationship with her, though physically Barda was based on the mom from My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Kirby is one of the most beloved creators in comics history, and tributes to him in comics abound. Two notable examples include the character Kirby in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, who is an artist with a magical pencil, and an issue of Fantastic Four in which it is revealed that Kirby is the literal god of the Marvel Universe. One last bonus fact. No matter how much you appreciate Jack Kirby, whether it's a little or a lot, it's not enough. It is impossible to overstate Kirby's importance to not only the genre of superheroes, but to the medium of comics as a whole. Besides the classic characters he gifted to the world, so much of the common language of comics originated or was popularized by the mind and tireless pencil of Jack Kirby. Long live the king. That's it for this episode of You Think You Know Comics. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to Comics Alliance for more comic facts, and check out comicsalliance.com for more comic awesomeness.